Voluntary manslaughter trial of Jennifer Crumbly continued today with those closing arguments. Before lunch, the prosecution finished a cross-examination of Jennifer Crumbly and the defense rested. Just now, the defense wrapped their closing, but the jury won't start deliberating until after the weekend. Andres Gutierrez has been following the trial all day for us. He joins us now outside of the Oakland County Circuit Court in Pontiac with a recap of the day. Andres? Terrence, the style of how each side closed was quite a contrast. The prosecution precise and concise on how they presented the testimony to the jury. They recapped it. The defense, on the other hand, well, she inserted herself throughout her closing arguments. So let's go ahead and recap. Oakland County Prosecutor Kara McDonald in her closing arguments that lasted just over an hour stressed that parents have a legal duty to control their kids and prevent from harming others. McDonald pointed out that even before the shooting, Jennifer Crumbly was saying that she felt that she had failed as a parent, telling her boss that she needed to get her son counseling. But then in court, when she was on the witness stand, she didn't think that she was a failure. Then McDonald threw up a PowerPoint slide showing the conflicting stories of what Crumbly knew before and after the shooting. And McDonald also emphasized that this wasn't about the school doing everything right, but instead what Crumbly did or didn't do to prevent mass murder. What ordinary care the smallest, tragically smallest thing could have done, she could have done to prevent this. She could have stopped at home on the way back from the meeting. She goes right by her home to see where the gun was. She could have stopped on, on the way back to work. She could have searched the backpack. She could have asked her son where the gun was. She could have locked the ammunition. She could have locked the gun. She could have taken him home. She could have taken him to work. He could have gone with dad. He was door dashing. She could have told the school that they just gifted him a gun. She could have embraced her son. She could have said, can, you, can we talk to him for a minute alone? She could have looked at him and said, I care about you, I love you. She could have at least acknowledged he was in the room. She could have told the school about her son being in crisis previously and asking for help. Now, the defense attorney, Shannon Smith, told the jury that the shooter was an expert manipulator who hid his issues from his parents to get the gun. She also believes that the prosecution presented weak evidence and that they had tunnel vision to get Jennifer Crumbly convicted. Can every parent really be responsible for everything their children do? especially when it's not foreseeable. And this clearly was not foreseeable to Mrs. Crumbly because there's no one in the world, including Mrs. Crumbly, who would have let a school shooting happen and let what happened on November 30th take place. Not only ruining the lives of so many families and victims and taking the lives of four young people, but also ruining her own son's life and ripping his <coughs> life right from her as well. She would be the first person on the planet who would have never let that happen in a million years. So the jury has gone home for the weekend. They come back Monday morning at 830. When they get here, there will be jury instructions that will be given to them. Five of them will be sequestered, and then the deliberations will begin. Reporting live in Pontiac tonight, Andres Gutierrez, CBS News, Detroit. Andres, thank you. Thank you so much, Andres. And we continue our discussion with attorneys Rick Convertino and Terry Johnson, who have been here all day um, as we heard closing arguments from both sides. Um, Rick, just summarize what you felt from today. How did it go? Well, the, the 30 second uh, clip of the closing by um, the defense attorney here, uh, the sliver of, of it excluded about um, almost a half an hour of buffoonery. Uh, so I thought the prosecution did an excellent job in, in, in a yeoman-like manner of concise and clear and putting forth the evidence uh, seriatim to the jury in its initial argument. And then I thought the defense attorney's uh, closing argument was um, a waste of time. I thought she missed a, the opportunity to address the facts and the, and the law with the jury. I think it was lost in you know, it was all about meism, which I've seen throughout the case is her tactic. I mean, she, she, 
she focused on herself, on her family, on her on total nonsense, honest to God, I don't know. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it in 34 years of practicing law, and I hope I never see anything like it again. The rebuttal uh, by Ms. McDonald, I thought, was, was uh, good, straightforward. She brought the emotion uh, out and, and the passion out that we talked about would probably happen in the rebuttal, so I think she did a good job of, um, of, 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 of addressing some of the nonsense and then, uh, and then refocusing the case uh, on where it belonged, um, on the defendant, on, on, on the shooter, and, and I think uh, she brought a sense of ethos in with talking about the victims and the police officers and their integrity, and I think, I think all in all, um, this case is um, clearly, in my estimation, going to return a, a guilty verdict on all four counts. Wow. wow. And we'll be waiting to see. Uh, and I feel a lot of people agree with you. The defense, with her closing arguments, Terry, it, it almost fell flat. It seemed like she was trying to humanize her in a way and say she makes mistakes just like we all do, as you mentioned it before, but it was bizarre. It, you know, you can say, my client's human, we all make mistakes. You make them, I make them. But to go into the mistakes that you make, to talk about the things that were talked about, to bring your own family in and call your own I mean, imagine her children who may or may not be watching this. You know, if they're watching <laughs> with their friends and, you know, are you the psychotic one? I mean, oh, it, 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 it's not the way I would have done it. However, <clears throat> however, um, I will disagree with Rick on a couple of points. I do believe at some point she did attack the prosecution's evidence and, or lack thereof. I think that she started unraveling some things and the question now just becomes, is there enough reasonable doubt? Um, I, I've said all along, I understand um, the emotion and other things, but I don't know that there's enough to come back with a guilty, in, in spite of, um, not because of, but in spite of what the, what the defense attorney has done in this case. Um, I, I, I think you may, again, Ms. Smith needs one, one to do it all over again, and the question becomes, are we going to be here for round two of uh, Jennifer Crumley if it comes down to a mistrial? And something interesting from uh, Judge Matthews' uh, release of the jury, before she did, she briefed them on what not to do over the weekend before they come back and deliberate on Monday, not to, to read news articles, not to go on social media. And an interesting thing she said to them was, from my knowledge, none of you have posted on social media. So it, there's, yeah. it's clear that there's people looking for this and monitoring their activity. I, I don't think there are. I don't think anybody is monitoring the, the right. jurors' activity. How you mean would she know? It was interesting. She said, to my knowledge, none of you have posted about this on social been, media. Hasn't been so if, to her attention. if someone right. had, then that means they would call, call another juror. Well, you, you got to remember again, we've got 17 right now that are listening. And in case something happens, mm -hmm. you know, as the judge stated on Monday after the jury instructions are read, she's going to dismiss five of them and say, okay, go back to your daily work. You're not free to talk about this case until the verdict comes in. So she's got plenty of alternates. Generally, there's two additional in, in state court. It should be 14 uh, because of the complexity and other things involving this. This judge and prosecution and defense agreed to 17. Uh, you know, given all of the buffoonery, as you put it, Rick, that has been playing out in this trial, especially in these closing arguments, it's almost like you can lose track of the fact that this is a very serious matter, something we've never seen before in this country. Uh, do you feel like some of that is getting lost in the message from the defense in trying to help defend her client? Oh, absolutely. I think, I think the, the uh, gravamen of this case uh, and the importance of the case, in, in, in notwithstanding the, the, the spotlight that's put on it, is, is incredible. And, and I think there was a lot of unpreparedness. There was. Uh, um, not a lot of seriousness put into and, and diligence put into the opening. You know, we heard about Taylor Swift and uh, some other nonsense. And then in the closing, I mean, I, I mean, seriously, um, if I were sitting there and my lawyer got up and started to talk about, you know, her son texting his uh, body parts and her daughter's a psycho and she wouldn't buy soda because, you know, she doesn't take showers and... I mean, it's it's incredible to over to overuse another overused word by lawyers. You know, it's really it's outrageous. It, you know, that's the, that's the word that applies to it. Um, now, the prosecution, um, Terry was saying, you know, why don't why don't why don't we were watching it, uh, uh, you know, off air, and 
Terry was saying, you know, why don't they object? Well, why the hell would they object? Why, you know, it was perfect for the prosecution. You have you have someone unhinged who's talking about, you know, hoarding uh, at her house and her house is a wreck. And, you know, she uses baby wipes uh, on a daily basis instead of, sh I mean, it, it's, it's this jury, who knows what this jury must be thinking. They must be thinking, wow, um, you know, what does this have to do with anything other than nonsense? And, and is it common to make objections during closing statements? It, it's not common. However, sometimes uh, things get a little off track. I think I've done it in my career maybe three times. Mm -hmm. um, it's always, Your Honor, I'm sorry, I, I, I loathe to object during the closing of, you know, brother or sister counsel. However, and it's got to be something that's egregious in order for you to do it. And I think some of the statements that were being made were a little egregious, to be honest. Yeah, I'd never seen that before, but that's something we've been saying <laughs> since day one. So, right. gentlemen, thank you for thank being you. here with us Thanks. as we thank continue you. this coverage. Have we a good appreciate weekend. It.